Welcome back guys. Um, this week we're going to be talking about the Boston Massacre and the Boston Tea Party. Um, hopefully you're checking out those cool videos in the social studies section. You'll learn a lot there and then we'll learn a little bit in here and do some kind of cool activities with the information we're learning. Today you're going to need two things for this lesson. First is your article called The Boston Massacre and the Boston Tea Party. And the other thing you're going to need is the word bank. And what we're going to do today is just go over these two things, make sure they make sense. Okay. So let's start with the word bank. The first thing on the word bank is British Parliament. So that British Parliament is the British elected leaders who made laws. It's a little bit like our Congress. They're representatives of people and they're um, elected and their job is to make the laws in the British government. Okay, then self-government. Self-government means that when the people of the country that's being governed have a lot of say in making their own laws. So it's not like, like in a dictatorship or in a monarchy where there's one king and he makes all the laws or there's a dictator it's like one person and he makes all the laws and there's no voting and there's no representation. Um, that would be like the opposite of self-government. Self-government is when you can vote and you can have some say in the laws that are being made. Okay, um, colonial legislatures. So colonial legislatures, obviously that's people in the colonies. Legislatures um, legislate all of those things has to do with laws, making laws. So the colonial legislature is a little bit like British Parliament, but it's over in the colonies. Um, so there are small local parliament that are made up of wealthy male property owners. So it isn't anybody that can be in the um, colonial parliament. You have to be male, you have to be wealthy, and you have to own land. Um, but if you meet all of those criteria, then you could, you could be part of the colonial legislature and have um, a hand in making laws. All right, democracy. And democracy is a type of government where the people take part. It's um, a form of, of self-government. Um, so with democracy, you have representatives and you have a say in the laws and you have a say in choosing the leaders. Like we vote for our congressmen and our representatives and we vote for our president. They don't just get appointed by someone. That makes us a democracy. All right, allies. In this sense, it means uh, friends during wartime. So people who are fighting on the same side as you are, who are supporting you, those are allies. Okay, taxes. Taxes is money paid to the government to help run the country. So when we pay taxes in this country, for example, tax dollars go to help pay for schools. Pa tax dollars go to help pay to build roads and public spaces, parks, um, all kinds of things like that. Um, tariffs is a kind of tax. A tariff is a tax that's paid um, on goods that are brought in from another country. And that will become important when we start talking about um, the colonies and tea and things like that. All right, let's see. Next is an act you'll hear in this reading, the Stamp Act and the Sugar Act and the Tea Act. They're laws. Um, boycott. Boycott is to refuse to buy something as a form of protest. So maybe you heard about the Montgomery bus boycott when you learned about the civil rights movement, when people refused to ride on the Montgomery buses as a form of protest. So we're not gonna ride your bus, we're not gonna buy bus tickets in order to protest uh, your, your unfair treatment of African-American people. So, Boycott is another a form of protest that's been around for a long time, and we'll talk about it in this reading. Congress. A Congress is a meeting of people who are representing a group, um, and those representatives can make decisions for the group that they're representing. 
So we have a Congress in Washington, D.C., and those are people who are, are voted for, and then they go to Washington, D.C., and they make laws based on what the people they're representing want, ideally. Okay, um, repeal, that just means to take back, or usually we are talking about a law, and it means you're making, that's not a law anymore. You're gonna repeal that law or make it so it's not a law, okay? Massacre is killing people who cannot defend themselves. And finally, blockade. A blockade is to use warships to help keep other ships from entering or leaving a port. So if you have a ship that wants to deliver supplies, for example, and you're trying to harm the people that those supplies would be going to, if you block blockade that ship and they can't come into the port and deliver the supplies to the people who need them. So it's often a tactic in wartime. All right, that's our word bank. Now we will read. Um, so just follow along as I read, okay? The Boston Massacre and the Boston Tea Party. From the beginning of colonial times, the British government governed the colonies. British Parliament made the laws and the colonists were expected to follow them just like all British citizens. There were a few problems with this system. For one, unlike the British people who lived in England, the colonists were not allowed to vote in British elections. So that meant that they could not elect people to go to Parliament and represent them. In England, they're voting for the members of Parliament. In the colonies, they didn't have a vote, and yet Parliament was still making the laws that governed them. Okay, um, number two, colonists felt that the English had no idea what their lives were like in the colonies. It was very different from England. So colonists felt like you're making laws about how we're supposed to live and you don't have any idea what our lives are like. The colonists were living 3,000 miles away from England. How could England control them from that far away? Especially in those times. Remember, it's not like they could get on a jet and be over here in a few hours. Um, it's not like they could call them up or send them a text or an email or like, King George III could go on TikTok and do a little dance for the colonists, not happening. Okay, for quite a while um, in the 16 and 1700s, England let the colonies make some of their own laws, but England had to approve them and the king appointed governors to be in charge of each of the colonies. Those governors made sure that the colonists only made laws that the British government would like and that they obeyed all British laws. This worked for many years, but then something happened that started a chain of events. In 1753, France began building forts in areas near the Ohio River Valley that both France and England had claimed to be theirs. Remember at this time that England has colonies in the Americas, but so does France, so does Spain, and all three of those countries are trying to grab as much land as they can. So there's this area that both France and England is saying they own, and France starts building forts there. So the British colonists see this as an attack by the French. Both the British and the French had allies among the native peoples, and they go to war. So the French are, are at war with the colonists. The British colonists could not win this war by themselves. So England sends their army to help. So then in 1863, with the help of the Iroquois and the British army, the colonists win the, the French and Indian War. Notice how long that is, 10 years, okay? So the British won and they gained a lot of land in the war but now they owned what had been French Canada and the land between the Appalachian Mountains and the Mississippi, Mississippi River, a lot more land. So more land was good, but now they had more to protect. And fighting that war had cost the English a lot of money. How are they going to pay for the war and soldiers to protect all of that new territory? Taxes! 
So King George III and Parliament decided to tax the colonists more. Nobody likes more taxes, but the colonists agreed to it, not that they really had a choice. And then King George III made the colonists even angrier. One, he told them that they could not settle in the new land that they had won in the French and Indian War. He said this land should be left for the native people as their hunting grounds. He was hoping that that would keep the native people from attacking the colonists. And two, he gave his colonial governors even more power to control the colonists. He said they could, that the governors could change any laws that they didn't like. So remember those colonial legislatures are making some laws and now the governors can, if they don't like it, say, nope, you can't have that as a law. The colonists were not expecting this. They thought they were gonna get more land and more freedom to govern themselves, but instead they got exactly the opposite of that. And then comes the Sugar Act of 1764. So remember England is trying to figure out how to pay. They're gonna pay by taxing the colonists. And the first tax that they pass is the Sugar Act of 1764. So the colonists bought many things that they needed from the British, like sugar, molasses, paper, glass, lead, paint, and tea. They also sold goods to the British, like fur, fish, wood, tobacco, rice, wheat, corn, cattle, and other things. The British decided that the way they would get taxes from the colonists would be to add a tax to anything they bought from England. For example, if they bought some sugar, they would pay the price for the sugar plus an extra fee called a tariff. Remember we talked about tariffs in the word bank. That's a tax on something that's coming into the country. This was called the Sugar Act. The colonists didn't like it at all. Not only did they have to pay the tariff, but they hadn't been allowed to vote on it. And this becomes a really big deal. This is a theme that comes up over and over again. Remember, they don't have any say in making the laws. So when Parliament passes a law like the Sugar Act, they don't have any representatives in Parliament to say, no, nah, I don't think you should do that. Okay. Next is the Stamp Act of 1764. Less than a year later, England passed the Stamp Act. This was another tax, this time on anything written on paper. Everything from newspapers to playing cards. Again, the colonists didn't like the tax, but what they were really mad about was that they had not been able to vote on it. Same thing. James Otis, a colonist from Massachusetts, called this taxation without representation. That's kind of a famous phrase from this era. Um, from this era. In other words, they were being tacked like British citizens, but they were not allowed to vote like British citizens. So it was not fair. No taxation without representation. Protests. Okay, so here are some of the ways that the colonists started to protest. They wrote letters to Parliament. They sent long petitions complaining about the taxes. They met in groups around Boston, calling themselves the Sons of Liberty and the Daughters of Liberty. They bought, boycotted British goods. So Britain's trying to sell them stuff and they're like, nope, if you're gonna put those tariffs on those goods, we're not buying them. They attacked the tax collectors. You would not want to be a tax collector at this time. They burned down their houses, they beat them up. They, some of them, they even ran right out of town. And some sent representatives to talk to Parliament, to argue with them. One of those was Benjamin Franklin. Okay, the Stamp Act Congress of 1765. So we have the Stamp Act in 1764, 1765, we've got the Stamp Act Congress. And remember, a Congress is a group of people who come together to discuss things and make decisions. Benjamin Franklin, James Otis, and many others had always thought that the colonies should work together. So they organized the Stamp Act Congress. This was a meeting of representatives from all of the colonies to discuss their problems and decide what to do. They asked everyone in the colonies to boycott stamped goods. 
Remember, this is newspapers, pamphlets, books, playing cards even, any legal documents, anything that was printed on paper had, a, um, had to have a stamp that was taxed on it. And it worked. Well, kind of, not really. Parliament repealed the Stamp Act. Yay! Then they passed new laws that made trade difficult for the colonists. Boo. Then they sent more British soldiers to the colonies. England said the soldiers were there to protect them from the native people. But to the colonists, it seemed like the soldiers were a police force there to control them. By 1770, there were 9,000 British soldiers in the 13 colonies. The soldiers and the colonists did not get along very well. Surprised? The colonists would call them names like redcoats and lobsterbacks. They were making fun of their red uniforms that they wore. And sometimes they would throw rocks at them. The soldiers would destroy the colonists' properly, property or ride their horses through their buildings. Then we get to the Boston Massacre in 1770. So things are a little tense, you could say, right? So this kind of fighting got worse and worse. And one day in Boston, a crowd of colonists gathered around a group of British soldiers. They were yelling at each other and the colonists were throwing snowballs and rocks. One of the soldiers opened fire. Some colonists fired also. Five colonists were killed. One of the first colonists killed was a man named Crispus Attucks. He was an African-American man who may have been a freed slave. There's, um, the records about his life are a little bit sketchy, but um, some of the documents uh, look like, they were, like he was originally a slave who had won his freedom. So they started the Committees of Correspondence in 1773. Oops, I skipped some. I skipped a part. Okay, after the Boston Massacre, things quieted down a bit, but both sides were still really angry. They continued to send petitions and boycott British goods, but the British did not give in. So the colonists decided to get organized and work together. This time they formed the Committees of Correspondence, and this is in 1773. So the Committees of Correspondence were groups in each colony that would meet and decide what they were going to do to protest. Then they would send message by horseback to all the other colonies to let them know what they were doing. Because remember, there's 13 colonies. It's covering a large um, section of land. There's no telephone or anything. So it takes a very long time for news to pass between the different colonies. And they wanted to be unified and stand against England together. So this is the way they started to communicate so that they were all kind of working together. Um, so in 1773, Parliament passed the Tea Act that allowed a British tea company to sell tea for a very low price. And this hurt the colonial tea sellers because the British were underselling them to try to convince them to buy from them instead of from the colonists. So they, and they still had to pay a tax on that tea. Colonists immediately boycotted British tea and protested in other more dramatic ways. In New York and Pennsylvania, they blocked British ships from their harbors. And then we had the Boston Tea Party. So Boston, in Boston, they tried to um, block the ships from their harbor as well, but the British got through. So one night in Boston, members of the Sons of Liberty, remember that group? I told you about. They dressed up as Mohawk Indians. They board a British ship and dump all of the tea on the ship into Boston Harbor. Parliament and King George were not happy. To punish the colonists, they said that no ship carrying colonial goods could leave Boston Harbor until they paid for all the tea that they had destroyed. They ordered, ordered the Royal Navy to guard the harbor to make sure no colonial ships could leave. Not only that, but they made the colonists pay to feed and give the British soldiers a place to live while they were there guarding them. So not only do they have these British soldiers who they do not want to be there, but they have to pay to feed them 
and pay to give them a place to live or let them live in their own homes even. The colonists called these laws the intolerable acts because they were intolerable after all. Okay, so that's what I have about this. We are gonna be working with the information in this article um, for the rest of the week, so keep this handy. Um, and that's all I have for today. See you next time. Bye.